What's up guys, today we're gonna to break down and compare the 2023 Ranger XP1000 Northstar Edition against the 2024 all new Ranger XD1500. All right, we're gonna first just dig right into the good stuff and start with the XD1500. If you've done some research, you know that this in 2024, comes with an all new powertrain. So it's a three cylinder 1500 CC engine. The previous 2023 Ranger and, and even till the kind of inception of the Ranger has just slowly evolved. So this is the very first major drivetrain package and upgrade for the Ranger platform. Now, for those of you that have followed us for a while know we're Razor guys, but I'm getting addicted to the Ranger market. So forgive me if I don't know all the ins and outs of the Ranger, but I'm, I live on two and a half acres now, so I'm getting obsessed with the Rangers. So I'm kind of gonna break down what I like about this new one. Obviously three cylinder engine. Um, this is a 110 horsepower engine. The older North Star Ranger, 82 horsepower. So right there, almost 30 horsepower, more just than this Ranger engine alone. And the biggest thing, steel drive transmission. What does that mean? Well, the 2023 XP1000 is just your conventional Razor drivetrain. Two clutches, rubber belt drive, um, the sheaves it move in and out and that's how it moves. This is a steel drive transmission. How does it work? Well, I'm not 100% sure, but it comes from like an automotive inception where it's, you can't, it's not a rubber belt that you can service. It's a steel drive belt. Um, similar kind of clutch engagement, but it's oiled, complete different feeling. Like the smoothness of the 1500s is absolutely insane. If you've used the old CVT style, you know that like you kind of go to put it into gear sometimes if you're on an incline you got to kind of shimmy it a little bit to get it unengaged this thing is absolutely smooth as butter anytime you could be parked on a full 40 degree incline and it just shifts in and out as soon as you put your foot on the brake um unengages and the shifting is like absolute butter so right now i'm in love with this transmission i can't wait to see uh what else they maybe put it in, in the future because the steel drive transmission is absolutely insane well, we're going to move on to the suspension now one thing I didn't touch on is these models are both 100% stock other than this has some prototype Walker Evans Racing shocks on it. The other vehicle has some BFG 30 inch tires with Walker Evans Racing wheels. So I want to touch on ground clearance because I've obviously altered um, both the vehicles slightly in the suspension, but the overall components are the same. So on the new XD1500, they've gone from 10 inches of suspension travel front and rear on the older platform, now 12 inches. So two more inches of travel front and rear, um, which is quite a big improvement. Um, Higher clearance ARMs in the front, both uh, still remaining a dual A-arm setup. So the, the basic geometry is very similar, but a little bit more ground clearance and a little bit more travel on the newer model car. One thing that is new on, on the XD1500 that, that the XP1000 does not have is the upper shock mounts. So there's, there's two locations to mount the upper shock bolt, both front and rear. What that does, it changes the actual motion ratio of the shock. So um, right here, we actually have the back in the higher setting. Um, what that's gonna do is if you leaned it in, it's gonna put more leverage on the shock, which um, when you lean it in, it's basically more, more leverage on the spring. So the spring isn't holding the car up as much um, to explain it quickly. But I plan on towing a lot with this car. So I, I went with the, with the farther, more vertical um, shock mounting position so that when I do wanna put a lot of payload in the bed um, or a trailer on it, it's already in that, in that position. In the front, I left it more leaned in for a more comfier ride. I don't plan on putting a bunch of weight on the front of the car, but pretty cool that you can adjust that based on the payload and how much you're gonna plan on towing. All right, now let's talk about the bed. Um, if you're even in the market for a Ranger, you're most likely using it to haul things around and it's a big, big part of the uh, platform. So the, the new XT1500, 1500 pound box capacity. XP1000, 1000 pound box capacity. So. 500 pound more capacity alone in the bed. It's bigger, it's deeper, um, it's got some rad features. It's literally got like a tape measure already built in back here. So if you're working, another cool feature on the XD1500 that's an upgrade is the advanced lock and ride. Basically it's got these aluminum tracks on the side to add all kinds of accessories. You can put tie down points, um, really sturdy and part of the bed. Some stake bed options. Basically the accessory line for this is totally renewed and advanced and uh, on top of the much bigger bed lots of easier ways to add accessories than the, than the older model. We'll talk about some of the in the cab features on the uh, XD1500. It actually has tow haul mode, so you can turn on tow haul. Um, what it changes in the mapping, I'm not exactly sure. I just got this, so forgive me there. But I do know 
that it's capable to tow up to 3,500 pounds. Older models rated up to 2,500, so a thousand more pounds of towing capacity in this. I have a drag that I drag my yard with, and it's crazy how smooth with new steel drive transmission that it tows the drag around the yard where the older belt drive model would, would struggle. And then there's some settings where it's got an updated rear diff in it, so you can actually run open diff rear, locked diff rear, front you could lock all the way in, so as well as three different drive modes. It's got comfort, sport, and standard. So that just kind of changes the throttle mapping. Um, some all new features on the XD1500 that the older model doesn't have. One thing, as I mentioned, is the smoothness of this transmission. So right now you've only got drive, reverse, and park. Um, no need for low anymore. There's a tow haul mode. Um, and neutral is a separate function. So neutral, you just turn it, pull it out a bit, and then it unengages the transmission. To release, you just turn it, and you can hear it re-engage. Really, super easy. I mean, compared to some of them, I mean, it literally just like falls into gear. Push your foot on the brake, you can hear it unengage, drive, reverse, park. So it's very like smooth. Um, really big fan of this transmission. So we already broke down kind of the workhorse features of the XT1500. Haven't touched on the, on the XP1000 North Star a whole ton. But I think the gist is for around the same price point, this is much more of the, the luxury comfort cruiser. It's got the full cab, so if you live in the snow somewhere really cold, the heater absolutely rips. We just had this thing out at King of the Hammers, and at nighttime we can take it to Chocolate Thunder, load it up with people, um, and ride in, ride in comfort. Power windows in the front, the front windshield tilts in and out. It comes with a winch on the car. Um, heater, AC, defrost, windshield wipers. This is the luxury cruiser for the same price point as the Sport 1500. If you're looking to just something to cruise around your cabin, maybe have a snow plow, not really get into the weeds on, on workhorse a ton, then I definitely recommend this. I love cruising this thing. The cab is second to none. I think it's the future for UTVs. I can't wait till one day there's a sport mode that comes with this full North Star package and the, and the windows and power. It's, uh, it changes the experience. You never know what you had until you actually experience this. So um, it's got the full ride command set up so you can trace your rides. It's got Rocker Fosgate audio. It's, it's fully loaded. So if you're looking for the, for the more bougie package, so to speak, um, this is definitely the, the route I would say to go. Well, that wraps up the XT1500 versus the XP1000 Ranger review. Um, if you made it this far, do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel right here. Like this video. We appreciate the support. And if you have any questions that may not have touched on on, on the Ranger review, like I said, I've been a Razor guy for a long time, new into the Ranger scene. But if you have any questions that I maybe didn't touch on, put a comment below and we will uh, answer any of your questions you might have. So um, thanks for following along.